In the first footage we see the family trying to escape the pursuit, but their car skidded to the side of the road. The man ordered his wife and daughter to run to safety where they would be met. Gunshots could be heard behind them, but there was no stopping. The pursuers were getting close. The mother and daughter hid, but it did not help, they were still captured and separated. The woman was rendered unconscious and was about to be taken away to an unknown destination. In the next scene we are shown the heroine in a room with an impact-resistant glass. She is now a maid, wearing a red dress and a white cap. From now on, her name is Fred's, and her former name is forbidden. Fred's recalls the first time she entered the house. The new mistress wonders if her experience in the previous house was successful. Fred's replied in the negative. Commander Fred Waterford arrived. His wife made it clear that the maid could have no relationship with her husband except that which was permitted for their common purpose. Presently Fred's went downstairs to the kitchen. A woman named Rita bakes her own bread, a Martha is assigned such work. It is a return to traditional values. Fred's was given ration cards and sent out for groceries. On her way to the gate she met Nick, the commander's driver. He has a low status, not even a woman assigned to him. However Fred's sometimes feels that he is the mysterious eye, who watches everything and everyone. Outside Glenn's is waiting for Fred's, for it is forbidden for maidens to go alone. Fred's does not like Glenn's because she thinks she is a pious fool. They talk about the few topics not forbidden to maids. Looking at the group of girls, Fred's remembers her daughter and husband Luke. At the store they, like the other maids with Martha's, choose their groceries. On the way back, Frida's maid and Glenn's maid decide to walk along the river. On the wall hang the bodies of those who dared to go against the new regime. Among those executed were homosexuals. Frida's recalled the first time she had been among the other maids. Aunt Lydia gave a lecture on how promiscuity, permissiveness, and the active use of contraception had caused an epidemic of infertility. Among the maids, Fred's recognized her old friend Moira, who in the past had been in a same-sex relationship. The maids are among the few women who have not lost their ability to bear a child. And henceforth they will serve high-ranking commanders and their barren wives. When a girl named Janine started openly calling it crazy, she was tasered and taken away. The maids were placed in the common room until they were distributed. That same night Fred's told Moira what had happened to her. Soon Janine who had tried to escape, was brought here. She had been stripped of her eye for her transgression, for full vision is not necessary for reproduction. In the present Frida's was preparing to take a bath, as she was supposed to do before the ceremony. More than anything, she wished she could find her daughter. Fred's went to her master's room, knelt down as she was supposed to pray. But instead she remembered how Janine, in front of the other maids, had talked about how she used to become the object of interest of guys she knew. Lydia made the other maids repeat that it was her fault, for she was a woman. Martha Rita and Nick arrived, and then Mrs. Waterford, who immediately pulled out a cigarette. She was unhappy that her husband was late, but he soon arrived. Everyone was ready to begin. The commander pulled out his Bible and read the passage about how childless Rachel told her husband Jacob to use a maid to carry on his family. Maid's head rested on his mistress lap while the Commodore did the rest. Everything happened in a very, very ascetic way. When it was over, Mr. Waterford left. Mistress told Fred's to leave too. Left alone Mrs. Waterford wept. Fred's is lying in bed. She was disgusted with herself, and in a burst of emotion she went out to the balcony, where she noticed Nick looking at her. In the room she remembered how Janine had begun to lose her mind. Moira had to slap her in the face to bring her to her senses. Moira reminded her that all undesirables are sent to the colonies to clean up toxic waste. It was impossible to survive there. Fred's was barely able to calm Janine down and put her to bed. They all need to keep themselves together to last as long as possible. Nick had seen Fred's outside yesterday, but there was no black van outside the house. No clearing came for her. She wondered why he hadn't told anyone. Today was deliverance day. There were eyes with guns everywhere. Here Fred's met another acquaintance from the past. Janine, aka Warrens, was pregnant and said she had heard about Moira being sent to the colonies. Fred's didn't feel good about the news. The maids knelt, and Aunt Lydia announced the unfortunate circumstances that had brought them all here. A man was brought out to them who had forced the girl into intimacy. She was a maid and was expecting a child, and as a result the baby died. The maids were called to come forward and form a circle. In the center was the condemned man. At the whistle the maids were to lynch him. So they did, releasing all the resentment and aggression arguing inside. When Aunt Lydia blew her whistle a second time, the maids stopped. As Glenn's and Fred's returned home, the latter recalled telling Moira about her pregnancy. Lately it has become considered a miracle, often babies, if they survive, are born with severe abnormalities. Glenn's told Fred's that she felt sorry for her friend Moira. Glenn's began to remember what life had been like before, and it surprised Fred's. It turned out that Glenn's was just afraid to talk about it, thinking that Fred's was righteous. It turned out that Glenn's was married, she and her wife were raising their son Oliver. The wife and child managed to escape to Canada, but Glenn's was captured at the airport. The girls were pleased to finally get to know each other for real. Before they separated, Glenn's warned her that the I lived in Commander Waterford's house. Fred's was shocked. Now she could trust no one in this house. June's life went on as usual, 
including ceremonies. They went shopping with Glenn's, trying not to arouse suspicion. June said she used to work as an editorial assistant. Now the maids are forbidden to read. Glenn's was a professor at the university in the Department of Cytology. Now former scientists are sent to the colonies, but Glenn's has good ovaries. The new authorities have even turned a blind eye to the fact that she is a gender traitor. The girls witness the cleansing of someone right off the street. Later Glenn's suggested that a new friend join them. There is resistance, and June could help them by finding out something about Waterford. When June returned, Nick advised her to be wary of Glenn's because she was dangerous. He also informed her that the Commodore wanted to see her in the study tonight. This was strange, for maids are forbidden to be alone with the Commodore. June can't find her place because of the upcoming meeting. Rita rushed her, because the birthing car, in which all the maids have been taken to Commander Warren's house, has arrived. Janine is due to give birth today, but no one knows what kind of baby it will be. June remembered the day of her delivery. As Luke led her to the hospital, the onlookers around her prayed, for childbearing was now a rarity. The wives of the commanders sat around the mistress of the house, who was faking childbirth. It was like a mass insanity. The maids meanwhile were led to Janine, who was assisted not by doctors, but by her aunts. Everyone kept telling her over and over again to breathe. June was flooded with memories of holding her newborn Hannah in her arms. Fortunately her daughter was born healthy. The nurse admitted that two more babies were in the ICU, and the others could not be saved. June told Glenn's that the Commodore wanted to see her today, and she had no idea why. Soon June summoned Mrs. Waterford. The Commodore's wives wanted to find out how Janine's delivery was going. Mrs. Waterford gave her a cookie, but when June went to the bathroom, she spit it out. Meanwhile Janine's contractions were becoming more and more frequent. A madam was brought in who continued to simulate labor. Soon the baby was born, and everyone watched with bated breath to see what would happen next. The baby cried. It was a healthy little girl, and everyone around was happy. The baby was placed in the mistress' arms and named Angela. June hugged the crying Janine, as did the other maids. Eight years ago June woke up in the room and realized Hannah was gone. A commotion ensued, with the nurse lying on the floor with no signs of life. It turned out that a certain girl had tried to kidnap Hannah, thinking she was her child. The perpetrator was intercepted by Luke, and the guards ran in. In the birthing car Glenn's tried to calm down Fred's, who was to see the Commodore. Janine was feeding Angela. She had done this before, feeding her son Caleb. Janine began to sing her daughter a lullaby. At 9 o'clock in the evening June went to see the commander. He ordered her to close the door behind her and sit down. Mr. Waterford allowed June to look at him, saying they could disregard the rules. He also stated that he wanted to play Scrabble with her. June was shocked by this suggestion. She scored a lot of points, even though she was giving in. The commander promised that when he returned from his trip, they would have a rematch. June returned to her room, bursting into hysterical laughter. When she went shopping the next day, her friend was replaced by Glenn's other maid. June had no choice but to try her best to control herself. 